Hey guys, hi, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. Uh, and welcome back to my regular content uh, and not uh, more about my cat and how sick he is. Um, he is better. Not 100%, but he's better. Um, but so as a flight attendant, um, one of the things people frequently say is, oh my God, how do you handle kids on an airplane? Ooh. And, uh, you know, I used to be allergic to children. I mean, no, no joke. My skull would want to separate from my head when even a child was around. If I were at a restaurant, I was already resigned. I'm going to have a miserable meal because there's a kid in the room. I hated kids. I love children now. I don't know what has happened to me um, through this job. It's kind of like cats, I guess. I used to hate cats until I got a cat and now I'm a crazy cat lady. Um, so I figured I would do a little video about how I uh, handle children on board aircraft. And so child wrangling 101. Um, I've written some notes down, so I apologize if I look away from the camera too much. But once again, you're probably not watching my videos for this visage of mine, right? So let me get my laptop out. Let's start with boarding. Everything starts with boarding, right? Uh, so even pre-board, even before they board, uh, if I'm moving through the aircraft to the gate and there's a whole bunch of kids playing around, I will literally make eye contact with as many moms as I can and smile. Hey, hi. Oh, look at that little kid. And I'll get on board the plane. So it can't start early enough, really, for me. But boarding. I want to say hi. Hello, sweetheart. Hi, princess. I love your glasses. Oh, look at those shoes. Something to interact with almost every child that comes on board. Uh, the only time that's awkward is when we're going to Orlando, for example, and half the plane is full of kids. It's hard to do that to every kid. But I do try to make it happen as often as I can. Uh, anything to interact with a child so that when I do have to talk to them later on, for good or for bad, we've already had some contact that was smiling and happy, right? Um, if the child looks to be about two years old, I want to smile adoringly at the child and say to the parent, oh, how old is your precious baby? So that they can tell me, oh, he's just turned two or he's a year and a half. I know right away to keep my eye out for them when they sit down because any child over the age of two that does not is not sitting in their own seat. It's up to like 35 pounds or something. I forgot. Any child over two has to be in their own seat with a seatbelt fastened during takeoff, landing, turbulence. If they're under two, the parent can hold that baby during the entire flight if they want to. It's called a lap child. So uh, when they're boarding and I'm up in front or mid cabin, oh my gosh, how old is this gorgeous baby of yours? And I am better prepared to handle them later on. So I'll know, oh, that child's two years old. They have to be in their seatbelt. And I'll approach that with a smile. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, is the parent traveling by themselves? Do they, do they need a hand? Can it help with their bags? Um, car seat, do they need seatbelt extensions um, to help install that? I don't have to install the, uh, the car seat, um, but I do want to make sure it's uh, installed correctly and it's secure. Um, the flight attendant A in my airline, their responsibility is to check the car seat for a sticker or a tag that shows that it's approved by the by the powers that be that the car seat can be used on an aircraft. If it's not, it's got to be gate checked and that child would be now considered a lap child. But so far, I have not seen a car seat come on board that was not approved for airline use. Um, as I move through the cabin, I'm sorry to read this. As I move to the cabin during boarding, I stop to admire every baby, especially if it's a solo parent. I try to make sure that I'll do whatever I can to make sure that the flight is enjoyable. Uh, if there's anything I can do for them to please let me know. And if the, because at this point I have a general feeling for the area, um, so I'll say something like, if anyone gives you even some side eye, let me know. I'll take, we'll take good care of you and everybody else. And usually I get a smile. Um, I try to keep my tone right there because any joke like that could go south real fast. So um, I frequently don't even make it. But once in a while I do. Um, compliance. I want to make sure I try to interact with a child first. 
uh, every time because uh, they're the ones taking the action. So I'll say uh, something like, hi, sweetheart, is your seatbelt buckled? And I'll, sometimes I'll use my little hand gesture for seatbelt and um, they'll gladly, happily f show you that their seatbelt is um, fastened and they're happy to say, yes, I did a good job. Um, and then I say, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if the, the child does not want to wear a seatbelt, <clears throat> again, I talk to the child smiling lovingly. Sweetheart, could you please buckle your seatbelt for me, please? Thank you. I appreciate it. And they usually do it. They usually comply. If they don't, if they don't, I'll ask the parent, please, could you make sure his seatbelt is buckled during, or her seatbelt is buckled during takeoff landing and when the seatbelt sign is on, uh, just for their safety. And once in a while, not often, but once in a while it happens where the parent comes back with a little clap back saying, he's going to cry the entire time as if that's going to stop me from asking you to do it. Um, I'll say, well, smiling with love. We're used to children crying. Not a problem. It's what they do. Uh, but it's for his safety. Um, so I do appreciate it. Thank you. And I wait for a heartbeat and then I move on. I don't want to, I don't want to stand there until it happens because I don't want this to be a confrontation, but I will find a reason to come back that way later on to double check it stuff. Um, Let's see. Um, I try to keep an eye out for people who like to lift their children up on their laps. Happens all the time. It's like Pop Goes the Weasel. You'll see little people, kids' heads popping up and down. Um, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. They, uh, or they like to let their kids climb all over the seats and grab the seat people behind them or in front of them. Pull people's hair because I think it's funny. Um or for some reason, there are people who pass children, infants, toddlers, t uh, across the aisle. It's like they're passing a drink across uh, uh, at the movies. Uh, even during takeoff, we see people from, uh, from the back. I'll see people hand babies across the aisle. Uh, and uh, I, when I'm in a particular policing mood, which is not frequently, I make a gentle, loving announcement. Please, uh, because we love your children so much, we want to make sure they're safe. Please make sure to hold them nice and securely during takeoff and landing and uh, the kids stop being passed around the airplane. Um, I try to keep out... Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I try to make sure that uh, parents, if they're traveling with little ones, especially little, little ones, um, I make a light, gentle mention in conversation. Oh, yeah, you know, by the way, if you need a seatbelt, uh, not a seatbelt, if you need a... Um, Baby changing table. We have uh, them in each of our laboratories. And I just make a little brief comment conversationally uh, because during our 10,000 feet announcement, we do mention that we have uh, baby changing tables in our laboratories, but no one listens to that announcement, particularly parents who are handling children. So I make a gentle, gentle um, conversational mention in passing with um, not everyone, but I try to I try to mention it when I can so that parents are aware of that baby changing table um, and uh, to have less seat baby changing uh, and I get less baby diapers, full ones, uh, full hot baby diapers being handed to me when I do trash. So that is why I say it. <laughs> um, babies, especially when they're coming on board, um, if you need, not when they're boarding, but during the boarding process or early on the flight, uh, you know, if I see them with a bottle, can I warm that up for you? Uh, and if I'm heating a baby's bottle up, I never want to do it with the parent not around. So I'll say, come on up in the front and we'll heat that. I'll show you how we heat it up. Uh, and so I'll, I'll put the bottle in one of our little um, paper bags that are usually handed out to people who might be sick. I know, a clean one, a new one, obviously. Uh, I'll put the bottle in there and I'll fill that up with hot water and I'll put it to the side. I'll close it up and I'll, um, in the moment it takes to let the parent know, um, you know, we don't have a microwave or anything like that. So this is how we, uh, we heat the bottle. In the moment or two, I'm chatting with the parent. Oh, so where are you going? Uh, the bottle, I'll um, take the bottle out. I'll wipe it off quickly and I'll hand it to the parent and say, is this warm enough for you? I'm never going to bring the hot water uh, over to the parent's seat because that, I don't want that hot water because that's hot. 
uh, to spill on them or the baby. I don't want it to be a danger. Uh, and again, I don't want that bottle being prepared anywhere where the parent can't see me uh, because I don't want any stories, liability. I don't want he said, she said, anything. So I want to do it all in their, um, their eyesight. Um, does the parent need us to hold the baby while they use a laboratory, for example? So yes, uh, I've only done this once. I've seen it happen all the time. It's only happened once where I've had to hold a baby. And what I did was say, certainly I could do that. Thankfully, she was sitting in an aisle seat uh, and I was able to uh, take her seat, sit down in her seat. Then I took her baby while I was seated and waited for her to get out of the laboratory. Then I handed her the baby and then I got up and can continue with my job. I don't personally wanna walk around the aircraft with a baby in my arms, because God help me if there's turbulence and I go flying and I've got a baby in my arms. Uh, so I try to uh, do it when I am seated. If I can't sit in their seat easily enough, I try to sit in an, uh, an open unoccupied passenger seat or I'll ask the person who's sitting in the aisle to scoot over for a moment while I sit in their seat while I hold the baby. So that's what I'll do. Um, da -da -da. Uh, I mentioned, I already mentioned the uh, changing tables. If the parents are, are, are struggling uh, to handle this stress of traveling with children, if they're losing it, and the kids are just a mess, and there's nothing gonna, nothing's gonna change. The baby's just a nightmare. Um, I will offer the parent something. Can I offer you a bottle of water, a juice, or a snack or something? I understand traveling with children is sometimes a little stressful. Is there anything I can get you? And boy, I'll tell you, even if they say no, the relief is palatable. Um, and I should mention, I should mention that all of this, any of this, is to benefit our guests and make sure they have a nicer experience, makes my job easier down the road when it doesn't get more difficult. And everyone around these families, everyone around this baby for two or three rows sees me being the good guy, sees me being proactive, seeing me being attentive and caring and loving. And so I know that if I have to ask them to do something down the road that they don't wanna do, like put their Gucci bag under the seat in front of them, they already know that I'm a good guy, I'm not being a jerk, so I usually get more uh, compliance with my instructions. So the payoff is um, multiple. All right, so toddlers uh, often find on their own, I wrote, uh, if they have a tablet or phone or they're, uh, or they're sleeping. If they're screaming, acting up, sometimes I'll just rush over, not rush over, I'll come over, I'll pop up and go, hey, hi, what's going on? You're too cute to smile. And frequently enough, that just kind of startles them enough where it sets them off the track they were on. They're like, what, 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 you know? And sometimes they stop screaming, so it's nice. Um, I'll ask the parent if the child can have a snack, even if they have their own snacks. Sometimes the kids just don't want what they have. That's my whole life. <laughs> sometimes the kid doesn't have what they want. And uh, sometimes they would love an Oreo um, or, or some goldfish or something. So I'll say, hey, can the, the child have a snack? And if they're old enough to uh, be able to make a decision, I'll say, would you have, and the parent says, yes, would you prefer, if I happen to have some Oreos or a Rice Krispie Treat, which would you prefer? And I'll tell you, you give a kid that kind of decision to make, they have lost track of why they were upset in the first place. And they're like, oof, Oreos or Rice Krispie Treats? Mm, 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 Rice Krispie Treat. And uh, the best choice. And um, I give them that and they start eating it and... I'll tell you, frequently enough, solution to a lot of my problems, bribing children with carbohydrates. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll ask the parent once again, is there anything I can get you? Because the child is going crazy. I know it's stressful. I didn't, I'm not going to say that to them, but you know, is there anything I can get you? Are you doing okay? And I'll tell you, they're usually very, very grateful to be to be asked. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna look around the seats around this crying child and say, uh, or, you know, this child acting up and say, you know, you know, I'll look around and if I see someone, it's like 
their eyes are burning at me, like, do something about that child. I'll be like, hey, how's it going over here? And if they are ballsy enough to say, uh, that baby, blah, 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 um, I'm going to say, you know, if I have an open seat, I can move you if you'd like. Or, you know, I don't, but I have either a snack for you or I have earplugs. <laughs> because I always have extra earplugs in my bag. Uh, and they will sometimes go for the snack and they'll sometimes go for the earbuds and they'll sometimes go for both. Uh, and so that's fine. Um, I am not above being able to comp a snack if it's gonna make everybody for four or five rows have a nicer experience. Uh, I want them all to become brand ambassadors for us and super fans. And uh, they can only do that if they like me and they have a nice experience and that they know they were cared for and listened to. You know what I mean? All right. So let's see. Kids, like five to eight, five to ten, they're the easiest. They've usually brought stuff that on their own that they know will keep them occupied. They usually know they want what they have with them. Uh, and so it's all good. You can have conversations with them if they are... Having a difficult time, it's usually something as simple as pressure in the ears when we're, when we're uh, approaching our destination, you know, and then I can give them some tissues and say, hey, now either blow your nose gently, because I don't want them to hurt themselves, gently kind of blow your nose or puff out your cheeks. Um, sometimes kids at that age want to talk. Uh, to someone who's not their parents and so I'll, I'll stop by and sometimes you get it you'll, you'll get a feeling and I'll say hey how's it doing how's it going over here and they're like fine I say have you flown before uh yeah no yeah whatever um oh where are you going or did you enjoy where you were and um well awesome awesome if I can get anything for you let me know and to be treated like a little adult all they want so usually they're pretty good I I've never had a problem with a little uh, with a kid who's like, you know, five to eight, five to 10. Unaccompanied minors uh, are kids for us, an I airline that are over five, under 15. And they're kids that are traveling by themselves without, uh, without a, uh, an adult. And uh, so there are services that we offer to make sure that they're safe and that they're comfortable. Um, those kids are usually they come usually pretty well prepared. It's only happened once where I uh, had a little girl come on board and she uh, she brought, I think, a little pad of paper about this big. And sometimes a kid is satisfied with a pad of paper, but she had a little pad of paper and a pen and she had, she had something else, nothing crazy. She really didn't have much with her. Uh, but we had two other kids next to her that both had smartphones and backpacks full of food and stuff. And so the kids were fine on their own and they wanted nothing to do with her because she didn't have a similar device and there was nothing they were gonna talk about. So um, she and I had uh, a little couple conversations. Uh, she was quite precocious actually. And my, my uh, coworker, uh, my, uh, the other flight attendant near me, we both had um, an adventure talking to this young lady. But as long as we plied her with food, honestly, she was fine. Um, and that was good. But usually kids that age come, uh, especially if they're, if they're unaccompanied, they come prepared either by their parent or guardian. Um, and they're usually safe. Unaccompanied minors uh, and the special form that's, that's filled out for that could also be someone who's over 15 years old. Say, for example, if someone had an intellectual disability uh, and they were traveling by themselves, they could also get the same services that we offer our unaccompanied minors. But I figured since they're kids too, I would include them in my list. Crying. Now, I only wrote a couple sentences about crying. Why is the child crying? I'm going to first try and find out what's going on. I'll ask the parent, hey, is there anything I can do? I'll ask the baby or the child, is there anything I can do? What's going on? Um, if there's anything I can do. And again, sometimes it's especially if they're crying and it's when we're making our approach into our destination, it's frequently uh, pressure in the, the eustachian tubes that go between the inner ear and the in the mouth. General rules. I try to approach every child and family um, at a, a, a tempo and a pace that's not rushed. I try to smile gently and uh, genuinely, not convincingly, eh, but genuinely um, smile. And I try to approach it 
as I try to with all of our guests, with a little bit of extra love and care, with a little responsibility as a backup. Um, Show the parents that we understand traveling with children is not always easy and we're there, we're there to help. Um, especially if it's a uh, parent traveling with the children for the first time. Uh, I'll say, oh, is this your first time traveling with children? Yes. You know, and sometimes if it's appropriate, if it's appropriate, they're not already drinking. I'll say, uh, you know, it's a five hour flight. We do have a full service snack bar, including adult beverages, <laughs> you know, whatever she needs. Uh, I'm going to make sure everyone arrives nice and safe and comfortable, though. Mm, no over serving. Um, I always introduce myself to children or parents with my first name. Um, hi, my name is Steven. I'm one of the flight attendants here. If there's anything I can do to make your flight more enjoyable, just hit that call button right there. Just let me know. And if I can get up, I'll come over. Um, and I try to keep an eye on the people and the moods around the children and the families, uh, to determine whether or not I have to jump in and try to save the day before it goes south. You know, uh, uh, de-escalization is a word that we use a lot during training. Uh, and I, de-escalization is wonderful. My goal is to not have to de-escalate anything in the first place and to start out again with love, respect, care. Uh, typically, I rarely, I rarely have to de-escalate anything, uh, particularly when it comes to kids. What tools do I use? Uh, wiki sticks. I don't know who, I don't know who made wiki sticks for the first time. It must have been some, some, somebody making candles for the first time and had kids and they got candle wicks and they started playing with them like modeling clay. Uh, but wiki sticks are these little wax things uh, and they come inside one of our, our kids snack pack that we sell. It seems expensive for what it is, but it's a little pack that has uh, Teddy Grahams, goldfish, fruit snacks, something else, and those little wiki sticks. Uh, sometimes the kids don't use the wiki sticks and when I'm taking trash, I'll take the wiki sticks out of the plastic and put it in my bag. Uh, frequently enough, flight attendants eat the kids snacks because they're delicious. Uh, and I'll keep the wiki sticks aside so that it, during a flight, if a kid is is bored by their $700 tablet, um, I'll say, hey, have you heard of wiki sticks before? And they haven't. So I'll, I'll give them the package and it has a little play sheet. You can make things out of it. And they're thrilled. And I've seen some really creative designs made by uh, young kids. Uh, or if they have a snack pack already, and they're, they seem to be bored or cranky or whatever, um, or if they've been really good, I'll say, hey, did you enjoy those wiki sticks? Usually, yes. Um, how about I had some more? And they go, oh, oh, I love that. And so I give them a little package. They're happy, their parents think I'm God, not God, a very nice person, and, um, and everyone's happy. <laughs> Um, I have an external battery that I keep with me usually. I rarely need it because my phone keeps a charge. Um, but frequently enough, we have kids on board who are on their phones the whole time. Uh, and so sometimes their phone dies, literally. So I'll just say, hey, here's the battery. Especially if they're older, either to the kid or to the parents, I've got an external battery. If you'd like, just please remember to give it back to me. And I've never lost it. In two years, I've not had anyone take it. So... We're good there. Um, I can comp a snack. My company, I'm looking at the timer on my, my phone here. Um, my company allows us to comp things when it will make a situation better. Um, in the past, we were not allowed to do that. And you know, if you know who I work for, we charge for everything. Um, but uh, you know, if a crying child is losing their mind, and a little bag of shortbread cookies can keep their hands occupied for a little while, I'm gonna be able to give them a little bag of shortbread cookies. And those cookies are delicious. And they make me think of those little arrowroot cookies so when they're teething or whatever, they can kind of keep themselves occupied. So I can comp them a bag of cookies or the parents a cup of coffee if they're just so stressed because they can't handle traveling with kids, I can give them a cup of coffee or a drink, a soda or something. I'm never gonna comp alcohol personally that's just for some reason maybe it's the alcoholic in me 
I'm never going to really comp alcohol, uh, but I will feel free always to comp a soda or a juice. Um, earplugs. I always keep earplugs in my bag for either, um, uh, usually the people around kids, <laughs> it's never the families themselves, but if someone's losing their mind, they're just going crazy because they can't handle the noise anymore uh, of kids, I'll give them a pair of earplugs. Um, also, sometimes you see people snoring on an aircraft or you'll hear them. And uh, so the person who's sitting next to them, I always say, would you like some earplugs? And they usually take them. Um, and my airline, because we are a low cost carrier, we don't have wings, like those little plastic wings to give kids. Uh, but we have little stickers, which look like a little pair of wings. And I'll, I'll say, hey, do you like stickers? What kid doesn't like stickers? I like stickers. And so we give them a little pair of wings. And then I joke and I'll say, well, now you're a flight attendant. I'm going to put you to work later on, so you take a nap. <laughs> they usually laugh. They usually laugh. Uh, and that is what I have to say about kids. I'm sure there's 10,000 other things to say about traveling with children on an airplane um, or managing them as a flight attendant and uh, everyone's experiences around. I'm sure there's a thousand other things to say, but those are some of the thoughts uh, I had on um, handling children on board airplanes as a flight attendant. So uh, if you are a flight attendant and you have experiences that are different than mine or you have tools that you've used that are different than mine, please leave a comment below. I would love to learn from you. Uh, and if you are a flight attendant, are going to become a flight attendant, um, start practicing your babysitting skills now. Uh, they'll come in handy. And uh, that's it. So I'll thank you very much for watching. This is back to being one of my longer videos. Um, and uh, I will thank you for your time and for the honor of having clicked on my video. And if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye. Have a great day. Fly oh, fly safe.